Hello and welcome back to another episode of Chadberry Photography. Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today is going to be my first in a series of interviews that I do with a number of photographers across the country. I promised I would do this when I launched the channel and this is going to be the first one and I'm really excited about this. Uh, I just want to be able to get you in touch with other photographers, try to find out you know, what inspires them, get some tips and tricks uh, and just get involved with them in the field. So this weekend just passed I went out with Matt Quinn, a buddy of mine that I met up in Algonquin uh, a few years ago. He's a dark sky photographer, excellent photographer, pretty good guy as well. Uh, and we went up to the Bruce Peninsula this weekend to do some shooting. So I decided to do the format of this. It's going to be a little different. We uh, had a campfire. I smell like camp smoke on all my clothes. It's wonderful. And we're just going to sit around the fire, we're going to chat, I'm going to mix some shots in as we go, and then I'll do a little bit of a reel at the end where you can see what we shot this weekend. In addition, Matt has written a book, The Canadian Rockies, from a trip that he did last year, and I have an autographed copy here, so stay tuned to the very end of this video. I'm going to tell you how to get a copy of that book for one lucky person. Thanks so much, let's join the campfire live from Bruce Peninsula National Park. <laughs> Matt's making himself a little coffee. I've got my water. It's nice and cold. As you can see our breath probably pretty good. It's pretty cold but not that cold. I thought it was gonna be a lot colder for some reason. It's a lot warmer than I expected. Yeah. There's it's... not a lot of wind in here in the bush. That's probably what it is. If we get yeah. it out near the water it's gonna be a lot I think older. I think this is probably the warmest temperature we've ever shot together. Yeah, yeah. The first time <laughs> we shot, it was it was like insane. It was probably what like minus thirty at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minus, yeah, really close. That was to that. the night the, the the night that I almost got frostbite in my nose too. Like I got back to my car <laughs> and my nose was like it was crunchy. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it thawed out of it. It, it, oh. well, it thawed out, and it was just. Wrong. I almost lost my toes that night. Did you really? Yeah. I, the, uh, you guys came in and we met and yeah. I, I had no idea what you looked like because yeah. because it was, you know. Well, pitch, it was like this. I, well, yeah, I, where you look, I see a headlamp. <laughs> you know, headlamps in each other's eyes. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, it's minus 30 and I've been out there for a little too long already and I, and I had forgotten my boots. Yeah. So I had like three pairs of socks on and some warmers, but it just didn't work in my shoes. And it was uh, like four in the morning too, yeah, which is yeah, hilarious. Really, really early. Beautiful sky. It was phenomenal. Beautiful. That was I, I had some 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 of my favorite most favorite shots that night. Oh, it was, um, it was gorgeous. Because the sky was you know it's one of the things about doing the night nice sky photography in the winter is that the sky is just just so different. You know, it's full of like little ice crystals and then they're, they're yeah, all kind yeah. of like it just it's has this ambience. natural frosty blueness yeah. to it. Yeah. And, like, you know, uh, and I just love that about the winter. Gorgeous. And I was up, up, I was up in Algonquin a month ago, and it was the same. It was about minus 25, but there was enough humidity in the air that it just—if you had your headlamp on, you could just see these like little sparkly yeah. pieces of just <laughs> snow. I guess yeah, yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah. snow, yeah. but yeah, yeah awesome. it was just awesome. love winter for that. It just adds this extra layer of uh, of just I don't know what you call it wonder or surreal. Yeah, another element. Yeah, winter wonderland yeah. in Algonquin. I love it. Now you were, so you were up a month ago. Now that's a project that's, are you allowed to talk about that? Yeah, I yeah. Th it's coming out, it's coming out this weekend, I think, and it's already been teased a bit. So I think it's probably fair game to talk okay, about. So it's coming out tomorrow, right? It's, uh, so, so today's Saturday. I think it's... Or no, today's Friday. Yeah, so today's Friday. So I think that's the first, the first episode is coming out um, Sunday. Sunday. It's being Sunday. Yeah, it's being released He's on Sunday. He's a star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm getting smoked out. My eyes are stinging like crazy right here. Uh, yeah, so so that's with Subaru, right? Yeah, so Subaru Canada, and yeah, we did this really really cool project together where awesome. um, we created these little just little um, kind of like snack size videos of uh, 
of how to shoot the night sky, like in the experience That's of going cool. out and shooting. That's and so cool. yeah, it, it was uh, it was a bit of an out of body experience because I'm, <laughs> I'm used to being behind the camera. I'm yeah, not yeah. used to being in front of the yeah, camera. So <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was a bit of bit of a strange kind of like process to go through, but um, I, I learned a ton and I grew a lot, I think. And uh, uh, I'm just excited now to have it out. Yeah, I, that's I'm, awesome. I'm really just I'm interested to see. To it. Yeah, I'm interested that's to see. Really cool. Uh, Very really cool. nice thing about this campaign that they're doing, and especially the thing, the process with me was, is that they really wanted it to just be authentic as possible, and, and just tell the real story of, and that's what I really connected with with this with this campaign. I mean, I haven't really done a lot of like sponsored or, um, you know, brand work like yeah, that before. Great. So, you know, when they said, you know, we just want to document what you do, I was like, well, that's, that's amazing, that's right? Easy. How yeah, often can, do that. can you, uh, <laughs> get, do you get to tell your own kind of personal story? Yeah, absolutely. It just happened, so happened that it was just a nice relationship to yeah, have okay. with, a, with a company that I already really trusted and cared yeah. about, you know, and, and obviously I would, even before this whole thing, you know, I would have definitely bought another one as my, you know, my next car if I needed to so even if this was not even sure, on the table sure. so it's just a nice it's just a nice you know merger of, of worlds uh, that's fantastic yeah it's, yeah, it's really, a really cool it. thanks really man cool. Um, really cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the series I'm really excited to see how it uh, you know hopefully gets a nice positive reaction it was a lot yeah. of fun to make and I mean for me it's like sharing these things uh, as I pour here you know, we so. are making coffee yeah Wow, he's making coffee. I don't drink coffee. I'm sorry. I am a I'm, coffee. I'm one of those guys. Addict. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I say it's, it's. Well, you have to be. You're always up all night long, right? <laughs> so I, I mean, yeah. it's early right now, guys. It is uh, early. We are. I don't know what. We're probably like ten o'clock or something right now. Is it already ten um, o'clock? I don't. I, I can't even get to my watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, not even. It's it's nine forty. Yeah. Right? So we're going to go out. Uh, we're we're in British Bruce Peninsula right now. We're at the national park, and uh, we've got our tent set up and everything back here. Uh, we're going to sleep for a couple hours after we do this little uh, nap time, little chat, um, and then we're going to get up pretty early and get out to do some Milky Way photography. Um, we've scouted some locations, and I think that's I think that's something that people don't really necessarily think about when you do night sky photography they just think you know point your sky your you know if you're looking for northern lights point the camera north if you're looking for the milky way point it south and yeah and uh you know set your settings and try to get it but to get a good composition with the right elements and it, it takes a lot of work yeah and you do a lot of that work during the day when it's a lot safer to do so and and i think today with the apps and stuff we have available on our iphones and whatnot is it makes it so much easier to to scout locations and to be able to find some great opportunities, uh, so you're not you're not using luck. Yeah, right? We're yeah. Making when, it I, happen. when I first started, I you know I just would pull over on the side of the road and, and uh, because I was just learning and stuff. But now now for me, it's become more of like a uh, like, I guess an art form. I guess you know for me, I want to find these really interesting um, compositions with all these kind of different. Uh, different components, you know, and really beautiful kind of foreground elements and, and depth to the image and, you know, just make it a beautiful photo to look at. Um, and to do that sometimes, yeah, you just want to get, you want to get there when it's light out, you want to get a lay of the land, you obviously want to make sure that, you know, the places you're stepping are, are solid, especially in the winter and the spring, with, like now, things yeah. are melting and you step on a little bit of a, you know, thing that's, you're on water and you go right in. So if you can kind of get a lay of the land before you go and set up where you're going to be, you know, get your composition, at least a piece of it in your in your head. And then when you get there at night, it's just much easier to focus on getting that beautiful shot. Right. Rather than trying to trying to like, you know, schlep your way through a forest and, <laughs> and you know, and, and uh, which we've done <laughs> yeah. and like, you know, work, you know, or get a soaker or just, you know, just have the night not not necessarily go as planned um right. and for me i never i never really want you know just, just show up a few hours early and get a get a sense of where you're going to be and you, everyone goes home happy you know you you, ha you get that beautiful shot I'm not saying it happens every time like sometimes i'll go like opiongo road and in algonquin sometimes i just show up and i'll just you know just deal with the soakers and stuff yeah. but uh 
but most of the time I definitely like to get out there during the day and, and have a look and yeah. plan for the night ahead. Well, planning is so critical. I mean, the, I mean, we planned this trip a couple of weeks ago. We, we, yep. we thought about it. We picked a date kind of based on what we thought, the where the moon would be, when it would go down, will we have a Milky Way and whatnot. But, I, I mean, so much is weather dependent. Like, we, you know, you have to kind of wait to the last moment, uh, a yeah. day, maybe two days out at most, to decide if you're even going to go out. Because, yep. I mean, tonight is absolutely gorgeous. I am super excited. It's crystal clear. It is, uh, like... We, Crazy like clear, really, yeah. really, really, really clear. No, and I think we're gonna get no. some amazing shots. But it could have just clouded in on us. Yep. Like, I mean, weather changes could happen all the time, and we. I mean, this whole trip could have been canceled. Yeah, you just <laughs> you just like, oh, Chad, it's not really worth going yeah. beyond. I mean, for nice guy, anyway, it's yeah. worth going just to hang out. Absolutely, um, sure. Have a fire and make <laughs> nice. some coffee and have some peanut butter cups. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, and it all. I mean, this is one of the things that a lot of people um, are surprised to hear. Uh, about night sky photography because um, uh, it's really it's really rare. Like you actually only get a couple days a month maybe to shoot the night sky. We've been yeah. incredibly lucky this past week because almost every night has been clear. That happens like maybe once or twice a year, but most of the time you'll have maybe two or three days a month to shoot the night sky. And the reason for that is is that you want to shoot around the new moon because the moon will drown out the stars. It'll, yeah. obviously, it's a, it's a big light source, right? Um, so you have to go when the, new moon, when the moon's not going to play a factor. Um, and, you know, I usually pick about five or seven days on either side of the new moon because that's going to give you a chance to shoot the night sky in, in some capacity. So, like, the moon will rise and set throughout the night. Like, tonight, right now, we're after the new moon by about five days. Yeah. And the moon's behind us here. Yeah. But around 2 a.m., it's going to set. Exactly. And then at 3 a.m., the Milky Way is going to, the Milky Way core, anyways, is going to start rising uh, in the southwest. Right. So that we know that, yeah, obviously, the moon goes down, the Milky Way comes up, we're, we're good to go, we can shoot. Um, and tonight, we got a chance. Fingers that's crossed. That's right, knock, knock on wood. <laughs> oh, gosh. We that's... might have an Aurora show. We're really hoping. Yeah. Yeah, so like. And that's even more unpredictable. That's, right? that's. Um, well, yeah, it's it just adds that that, that next level of uh, odds, right, to the to those equations, and then to get all of those things to combine. Um, I mean, these are they're, they're rare events, and if you're able to get it, get yourself out of the house and put yourself in one of these little windows, yeah, where you know you're away from <laughs> the, you're away from the city, um, you know the new moon the new moon's not going to affect your 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 shot. And uh, you know, and the clouds stay away. Like you have these three things align, then you can shoot the night sky, right? But then on top of that, that to have an aurora happen yeah. in, in that little window, yeah, 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 it's just like, and this is what makes it so much fun awesome. to shoot the it's night awesome. sky. You get to, you get to have this chase, and yeah. and uh, and a lot of times you go home empty-handed, but you get to have these awesome experiences in nature and, um, every single time. But when you do get those times where you, you do get the Milky Way shot or you do get the beautiful night sky shot and you do happen to get an Aurora, it just, you know, oh, just it's worth amps, it. It's it just worth amps it. the whole, <laughs> it just amps the whole experience up. So, and then you just get hooked on it. Um, like I am now, I'm just obsessed. You know, I, uh, it's just such a fun experience. And now we shot this, not this weekend, but next weekend, last year in Algonquin together. Yeah, that's uh, the, yeah. about five or six of us. And it was about minus 20, 20 ish then. It was a little warmer than the first time we shot. It was insanely cold. But it was really it? still cold. Yeah. And we shot the entire night, which was awesome. I mean, yep. we shot, we met up at what, three, more, three in the morning, I yeah, think. Yeah, it was about three two, in the morning. Two, yeah, two, two or three. three. Yeah. Uh, and we shot right through till well after sunup. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we stayed all the way to sunup. Yeah, and we had. Awesome. Uh, we had a great time. That was a really fun morning too. I got some beautiful shots. Awesome. Um, we got the International Space Station yeah, going Yeah, coming by. right down a line with the yeah. Highway 60. It's yeah. just amazing. And a, one of my favorite shots to date actually is, is the five of us. that We, we lined up along oh, the, the highway, highway there and we were all, all our headlamps pointing towards yeah. the Milky Way Corps. That was fantastic. And uh, that was a really fun shot. It turned out it's just way better than I could ever hoped, right? It was just perfectly... I think night photographers are... Um, I think they're almost a different breed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we're a bit I strange. Really, uh, you know, we're who, a bit weird. who gets up gets up in the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, we plan, we pack, we have everything ready, and then you get up and you, you leave the comfort of your your sleeping bag or your home. And and I mean, today we we drove five hours to be here. Yeah. 
Uh, and it's great, and I think we're going to have some great shots. But we take, you know, when you take that chance, and there's nobody here. I mean, we are, we're literally oh, yeah. two people yeah. in the entire park today. Doesn't that make it just yeah. awesome, right? Like, <laughs> it's I just, just incredible. I just love it. It's just like, it's like a, I just like the challenge, I guess. It's just, it's a nice adventure. It, it's something that you can, you can share with other people. And, and, uh, and I like that aspect, you know, I like that. I like that, that it's a challenge. I like that it's an adventure. I like that I push myself outside of my comfort zone. Um, you know, when I'm out here by myself doing these types of things, um, it can get a little bit, you know, you're like, oh, God, this, am I going to get attacked by a bear? <laughs> like, no one's going to find me for days. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and those, are, those are real, I mean, they're not, those no, could happen. I mean, yeah. I mean, you could just slip and fall. I mean, yeah. So you know, there are risks. There are risks. So, you know, when you do have a, another person with you, it definitely makes it a little bit easier. Um, takes, takes the edge off, yeah, right? And yeah. you can relax a bit. But the more and more I do it, the more I realize that, you know, I'm getting smarter at, you know, understanding. I'm more in tune with, I guess, nature and I know what to look for a bit more. But again, yeah, you slip and fall. That's sure. That that happens. That yeah. shit happens. So, um, but yeah, you just gotta you know have your wits about you. But um, yeah, being out here by yourself can be pretty freaky. Um, but the more, like I said, the more you do it, the easier it gets. So you're not scared of the dark anymore. Uh, I probably am. I'm mostly not scared of the dark. Anymore. <laughs> mostly not scared of the dark. I, I, I like that. There's definitely there's definitely <laughs> moments though. Like I like. That there was just some weird noise in the tree, right? Like if I was here, out here by myself, I was like, ah, I'm probably just well, going to get. Well, I mean, it's so uh, it's so amazing. Like, first of all, you're like most people from the city don't they don't un, you know they can't appreciate what a night sky really looks like. That's the truth. Right? There's so much light pollution. Uh, you just can't see the stars. I mean, I'm looking up and I can literally see 300 stars in just this little patch that's open yeah. in the trees. Uh, is brilliant, but it's also so quiet. I mean, the wind dies down at night. Uh, everything gets quiet. Everything, most of everything's asleep, except for you know all the nocturnal animals and stuff. Right. And just you know, I mean, a, a, a twig snaps somewhere because uh, you know the ice I'll, ice I'll expands and pops it, and your head turns and yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it'll send you running for your car pretty quick or your tent yeah, or any, yeah. any kind of like shelter. You know, uh, you, your mind can definitely run wild. And again, that's, that's also part of what I love. It's, a, it's really a, it's a, like a challenge. You know, if you've ever like suffered from any, types of, any type of anxiety in your life, mm -hmm. you know, you, if you're in a situation like this and you realize that, you know, you do hear a stick break and you're like, you immediately think of the worst, yeah. right? Um, that you know and you find out oh it's not so bad and yeah. then and then you realize oh i don't have to worry and then it's it's a way of it's it, you know as as fun and as adventurous it is it's also a way of kind of like uh, i don't know just like therapy therapy yeah, yeah. It, it just kind of helps you helps you uh overcome some of the things that maybe you don't really have to worry about that people t maybe worry about you know, I, I know every time I get out into nature, whether, you know, whether it's night sky or, or, or daytime or anything, but just getting away from the city, getting out into nature, being out there with, with wildlife and, and plants and, uh, and just, and being, in a, you know, even if you're in the peak of busy season, it's still quieter than it is in the city, right? You're just getting away and you're reconnecting. And, and I, I think that yeah. is really therapeutic. And I think in today's day and age, uh, I mean, I haven't touched my cell phone in like three hours. Isn't that great? You know, you know that yeah. never happens at home, right? I'm, you know, yeah. I'm always checking something, right? Uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, one of the things, it's funny you mentioned that because, uh, you know, when you, usually when you're out here in these locations, it's, it's, uh, you don't get to use your cell phone. Yeah. It's just off. Yeah. And, and, and that's like this peaceful, this peaceful break. Uh, I mean, I love texting my friends and, you know, checking Instagram and stuff, but, um, it's also you realize how like automatic it's now become. It's like you just oh check your phone, scroll, 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 check your phone, text, yeah, blah blah yeah. blah, and it's just like it just becomes like it's almost like it's automatic. It's like you're addicted or something. It's sure. like a, it's this weird auto response. Uh, but when you're out here, it's like I don't have. There's just this that that need to check my phone all the time just vanishes because it's not buzzing and ringing and constantly begging for attention, you know. Um, and you can just focus on on your surroundings and and like how quiet it is for example like let's just like 
You know what I mean? Like, so it's insane. Amazing. It's insane. It's like nothing. So what I do now, actually, I actually have my phone uh, when I'm back home. I have it in do not disturb mode. Yeah, yeah. So and it just too. it shuts yeah. everything down. And then the nice thing is, is when you do check your phone, um, you know, it's just on your own terms and it's less stressful. And, and uh, that's been a really big change, actually. And it's all inspired by kind of this experience because of not having the cell phone signal at all. Awesome. Yeah. Are you awesome. getting completely smoked at right I'm now? I'm getting smoked. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, it's getting you a little wanna... lower, and I'm just getting banged here. Yeah. Um, that, that's the, one of the, the one of the one of the wonderful things about camping is yeah, getting you know uh, being blinded by your fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, right. What's uh, I guess um, uh, uh, you, for you... for our viewers, I guess what it would be one of your uh, for someone who's aspiring. Yes. Uh, to get out and to do night photography. Uh, okay, so this is one of my, my first pieces of advice is I would say the first few times you go out, go out with somebody with some experience who can guide you through the process and so that you you learn the techniques, you learn the things, you know, the safety protocols, and, and you you have that guidance. And, and to take away some of that anxiety of being out yeah. in the middle of nowhere without yep. a cell phone, uh, with no service, completely alone, yep. uh, and, and just don't be completely alone. Have, have one or two people with you and and, and start off that way. But what, what would be one of your pieces of advice to someone getting started? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's all great advice. I think uh, first, first and foremost, though, just baby steps, right? Yeah. Like you don't need to go into the middle of nowhere without cell signals and... and <laughs> Just like you don't drive. have to go all in right away. You no, know, you don't. Yeah. And and I wouldn't suggest it actually because it's it's almost like you know well do whatever you want but um, you know be safe. Uh, <laughs> but I mean know your know your limits right. Uh, and if you're not used to being out in the wilderness and you're not used to you know then yeah just baby steps right. Uh, take it a step at a time. And and if if it's something that's brand new and you haven't lived you know you ever spent a lot of time out out in the wilderness then. Um, just maybe just drive out of the city an hour and, you know, park on the side of the road or, or find like a, a, one of the first things I did was that there was an old baseball diamond, uh, in this, this one town that I, you know, would drive to and just park in the baseball diamond and just go onto the field. Yeah. And I would just, you know, I, it was still super light polluted, but at the time it was like phenomenal because sure. like any photo at that point was just, <laughs> you know, and then you could screw around and you wouldn't necessarily be all that worried. And you know, a town's just right down there. Yeah. Your cell phone works and, you know, um, and then you can just, again, you just push a little bit further once you get more comfortable uh, if you're by yourself. Um, and if you do really want to go in hard, then, yeah, like, yeah, find someone who you um, know who's doing it or do a workshop or mm -hmm. um, find people who, um, you know, you can just, you can tag along with. A lot of times when you're beginning and you really want to get professional advice, I mean, the workshop's probably the easiest way to, cut your teeth Absolutely. right because you yeah, can yeah. you can learn an absolute ton uh and you're out there with like five six ten people um so like just you know all you need to do is run faster than the guy behind you right so <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true actually uh, <laughs> uh but you know you're there with a bunch of people and it's probably pretty noisy and it's gonna be really safe and sure um, yeah and that that professional you're with um or professionals in some cases um you know they're gonna they're gonna make sure that you have a, a somewhat decent experience and, and be there to guide you through uh, all those things. No, that's that's great advice. I, I really like that because it kind of echoes what I talked about in uh, my episode a couple episodes ago when I talked about wildlife and bird photography and practicing at home. Yeah. Right. Practice in your own backyard, close to home, and yeah. learn the skills there before you take it that next step and start driving five or six hours for for literally. We, we drove five hours today so that we have a three hour window of shooting uh, and we're <laughs> going crazy and we're going back tomorrow uh, you know like yeah. we're, we're actually going to be yeah. 10 hours on the road three hours of shooting yeah. right? you know we're not even getting 33 percent off our investment but I, th I think it's totally worth it but yeah but and start at home get those skills and then take it with you absolutely I, that's that's um i mean that's i know that model well because that's what i did um but I think, you know, if I were to do it again, you know, um, workshops would be a great way to, to accelerate that process. And there's a ton of those. There's an absolute ton, of, a those. ton of those. Yeah. 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 No, that's awesome. 
We'll drink well, a few coffee. There's not actually a ton of, in Ontario, actually. Not in Ontario, no. Yeah. No. There's not All, around the world, there's a lot. I mean, yep. you might have to travel. But Ontario, yeah, yeah. there's only a few people. Yeah, and they can be pretty expensive, but when you're, again, there's just, there's trade-offs, right? You either do it yourself, yep. and you learn, and you push, you know, your boundaries, um, and that, or you just spend the money, and you do a workshop. I mean, obviously, the workshops abroad are super expensive, but the sure. workshops locally are, are, are definitely yep. more affordable. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, I mean, if you're trying to learn it all on your own, I mean, it's a big learning curve. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to it. I mean, I've, I've been shooting Night Sky for six years now. Yeah. And, and, I, and I wouldn't put myself in the same category as you. I mean, I could take a great shot. Yeah. Uh, but you know a lot more. Uh, you, you've taken it a lot further. You're, you're down to, you know, doing clusters uh, and galaxies and stuff. <laughs> and and I'm, just, I'm just happy if I get a pretty picture and, it, and it's dark and there's some stars. Yeah. Um, you know, I, but... It, the further you take it uh, on your own, I mean, you're gonna have, you're either gonna invest your time and your money into that workshop near the beginning, or yep. you're gonna invest your time and a lot more time, and probably the same amount of money over that period of time and doing it on your own. Yeah, in just one way you're gonna get the results probably a lot sooner. <laughs> yeah, you would. And one thing I did at the beginning too is I joined the local. Um uh, Royal Astronomical Society of Canada Club. Oh, cool. Uh, well, that's K why you know so much. In KW. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, those guys, I mean, it's that's, like, next level. That's what they do. It's just, like, <laughs> they have their trucks, and they pull out their telescopes, and they've got marine batteries. They've got their laptops set up, and it's, like, they're getting these incredible sh deep space shots of these galaxies yeah. and nebula and stuff, and it's just... You know, for me, um, I, I, it was super interesting. I learned a ton about like you know star trackers and polar alignment and and uh, you know just general star mapping stuff in the sky. I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, just general star mapping, right? Like right. I know where you know just by oh, there's you know the North Star is that way because I can see the Big Dipper here and oh, actually there it is right there. Um, so you know, just things like that, right? right, right. Um, and all that was again just me being a bit of a question hog at these night sky, um, these, this, this area this is like a, a, an observing area sure. uh, that the, the club uses. Cool. And I'd always just go out there and try to capture pictures. And so big props to those guys for being so patient with me when I was learning <laughs> for sure. Um, good group of, good group of folks there. Um, you know, always willing to share in uh, other knowledge. So that's a really great way too. If, if so, if you want to awesome. learn, find your local, um, astronomical club and oh. uh just you know for me i mean i didn't eventually i love the strong i love astronomy but it's not like I'm, I'm i want the adventure i want the, yeah. the getting out into the wild so uh big telescopes and massive like pieces of gear and stuff was just not what i was interested in but um like you know i wanted to hike and, and do right. all that kind of stuff so I found this kind of miniature tiny little star tracker that I can put my camera on so I can I can kind of get the best of both worlds you know I can get these nice beautiful wide field photographs of the night sky and capture all this beautiful detail skies last night we got some fantastic shots can't wait to share them with you I'm a big tub right now that's the big tub lighthouse right behind me uh, we're just doing a couple sunrise shots and stuff we'll do a quick pan that direction not a lot of color this morning 
But hey, we're out, we're having fun. It's an awesome time. Matt's over there getting a little bit of footage there. He's got his ND on. It's really super windy, so I hope the audio works on this. We had a great time this weekend, guys. I hope you really enjoy the video. Talk to you next time. All right, thanks again for joining me this week. I hope you enjoyed that talk as well as some of the uh, shots at the end and you got a little bit of an idea of uh, where Matt gets his inspiration and what it's like to be a dark sky photographer. If you wanted a copy of his book, you can check the links below. You can, it is available for purchase. I have links to his social media as well as his uh, website. But if you want a free copy, all you have to do is leave a comment below saying, I want the book. I want the book. That's all you got to say. I always appreciate your comments anyways, but if you want a copy of that, put that in there and one lucky person, we're going to draw at random and we're going to mail that off to you. So see you again next week. Make sure you subscribe or check out one of our other videos. Happy shooting.